You're listening to the Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper. Folks, I just got one one thing to report, and you better listen to me, because it's important. It's cold in Kansas City, and I ain't lying. <laughs> Part of my journey was on Route 66, where I picked up a few tips from Rush. And of course, I don't have a snurdly in the control booth, but... Uh, <laughs> oh, let me tell you something. The guy never quits. I mean, Hillary called herself stupid and apologized to the nation. And he chopped her into little pieces, put her through the lawn, shred her. Dumped her in the dumpster and then called the truck to haul her away. I mean, when does it stop? Ladies and gentlemen, I mean, I don't like the man or the woman either, but... Uh, and yes, her apology, of course, was a scam. And it's designed to make the American people feel better about what she did and... Uh, make the president look better and all that stuff, but she apologized. I mean, you know? Give it a rest already. You know what I mean? Jeepers creepers, folks, I uh, told you that my, uh, <clears throat> by the way, I'm using all of my brain because i got to use every bit of it to do this show. This isn't the kind of show where you can sit on half your brain or put one-third of it in a safety deposit box down at Citibank and uh, sell one-third short on the stock market because you know something that everybody else doesn't know. And uh, then do a show, <clears throat> keeping the other third uh, in reserve. Nope, on this show I use all my brain, every bit of it. 
Remember a few months back, people called and kept asking me about this Jay Schwashinger thing. Will you pay $300 to have your claim filed at the county courthouse and in return, uh, when the uh, special forces bring back all the gold in the world and deposit it in Fort Knox and uh, the double that's posing as the dead uh, Alan Greenspan is deposed and when they uh, quit putting the new stickers on the doors of all the Federal Reserve Banks, uh, you're all going to get millions and millions and millions of dollars. <laughs> I don't know who you're going to take it away from to get it. <clears throat> Remember I told you that was a scam? And if you got mixed up with it, you'd probably go to jail. Well, that's what's happening across the country. They're locking these people up just as quick as they can capture them with the little nets. Put them in their straight jackets and lock them up. Jay Schwashinger's been in jail. Uh, in Mankato. Let me see, this is the free press. City and regional from where? Where is this from? Mankato, wherever that is. A rural Mankato. Oh, Michigan. A rural Mankato man wanted in Michigan for his alleged role in a multi-million dollar scheme to defraud the federal government was arrested Thursday morning as he drove away from his home. David Irvangelo Gardeman, 59, of Blankety Blank, was taken into custody by Blue Earth County, Blue Earth County Sheriff's deputies. Hmm. Where did I get to be a part of Blue Earth? County Sheriff's deputies, about 9 a.m., a Michigan warrant charges Gardeman with four felony counts of fraud and conspiracy to commit fraud. Blue Earth County Sheriff Brad Peterson said Gardeman had been under surveillance for two days. He said Gardeman offered no resistance during his arrest. Bail is set at $50,000. Gardeman belongs to a group called, and it's, quote, we the people, end quote. He's one of four members of that group whom Michigan officials suspect of illegally soliciting cash from and making false claims to people in several states. The money was a filing fee enabling people to join a class action lawsuit. In return, the victims were told they would receive millions from the successful legal action against the Federal Reserve Bank. Yeah, people all across the country are being taken by these people. What's that, Snodgrass? <laughs> oh, I gotta tell you, brush keeps you well and it keeps me entertained. Uh, you know, I almost went off the road about five times listening to Rush. I really, really like to listen to Rush. He is one of the greatest entertainers that has ever been born upon the face of this earth. And he makes no bones about it. He doesn't lie to anybody. He tells you flat out that he's interested in ratings, that this is a business, that if, if, upon switching to the liberal agenda tomorrow, he could get a higher rating, he would do it. And yet the ditto head caucus across the country still think that this man is presidential material. And of course, the Trilateral Commission, the, the uh, Council on Foreign Relations, are not up to anything. Nothing at all. A benign group of old men who sit around and smoke cigars and talk about what they did last Saturday at the lake. The lake at the Bohemian Club. I think. <laughs> but far be it from me. Interesting. Very interesting. So, I guess you uh, have gathered by now, folks. <laughs> Had a good time. In Kansas City. <clears throat> We're doing something that is incredible. If someone had asked me a couple of years ago if this was possible, I would have shaken my head and said, I don't believe so. But it's happening. Remember I told you about the Kansas City resolution that we did in the first few days of December? Met with some of the leadership of... Uh, all of the third parties, or most of the third parties, I should say, <clears throat> who the third parties who profess to believe in constitutional Republican form of government, and we drafted a resolution 
pledging to cooperate in a coalition instead of all of us fielding different candidates in the coming 96 presidential election so far we're all agreeing to seek out identify and field one candidate who will pledge himself to the constitution for the United States of America as the party platform and will restore the country to a Republican form of government, constitutional government. This last meeting in Kansas City was not attended by everyone who attended the first meeting simply because of the weather. And until I'm told otherwise, that's what I have to assume happened because several airports were closed. And uh, for part of our journey, we actually contemplated turning around and coming back home because uh, between uh, Albuquerque and Tucumcari, New Mexico, last Wednesday night was a solid sheet of ice. And if we had not had a four-wheel drive vehicle, we would not have attended the meeting in Kansas City either. But quite a few people did show up. And we made significant progress. <clears throat> in that we have further strengthened our resolve. We have decided to bring the nation the cure. That's right, folks. There will be an organization forming very shortly called Cure. And I'm not going to tell you what that stands for tonight because I want you to chew around and chomp on it and think about it for a little while. The Cure. And the Cure will be a sort of a coalition formed as a separate entity in order to collect and distribute funds for the election of a candidate in the 96th election backed by all of the third parties and of course any Democrats or Republicans who wish to escape <laughs> return to a world of sanity will be welcome in fact anyone will be welcome under the banner of cure any political party will be able to affiliate with that candidate and promote that candidate on a ballot simply by in most states filing just a few extra forms and uh, we plan, and this is just in the planning stages right now, so don't go off the deep end. We plan to hold a convention in September of 1995 from which the search committee, of which I am a member, will present a slate of candidates which will be researched by another committee to make sure that there are no hidden Paula Joneses in anybody's background or George Smiths if the candidate turns out to be a woman. And we will be looking for candidates amongst all genders, races, religions, whatever, who will pledge themselves to constitutional government. So, if you know of anyone, if you have any sleepers out there that we don't know about, Send me a letter right away. The delegates to the convention will choose from this slate of candidates, will nominate their favorites, and the delegates at a convention vote will decide the candidate that we will field for the presidential election in 1996, who will be committed to restoring the Constitution to its rightful place as the supreme law of the land and restoring the nation to Republican government. We have a chance, one last chance, to make this work. And it all came about because of the hard work of a few people. And I think that Walter Myers deserves probably the lion's share of the credit. <clears throat> and that's all I'm going to tell you 
about that tonight, folks. It's something that you can get excited about. Something that we can all be proud of if we're successful in bringing this off. The Constitution Party has had a great, great deal to do with it and a great deal of influence on the decision making. And, uh, and your communications to me about people that you believe would be good candidates. Remember, folks, we must inspire a nation. We must instill hope in people who have given up hope to get off their butts and go to the polls and vote for this person. So we need someone who not only knows the Constitution inside and out and has pledged his life or her life to constitutional government, the constitutional government, the Constitution for the United States of America, and who can get up and field questions and be strong in the face of attack and answer correctly the media's questions and anyone else's questions for that matter and can inspire a certain command presence and charismatic leadership with the people across the nation that's what we need and I'm going to tell you right up front, for those of you who are constantly doing this, I am not a candidate, will not be a candidate, have never tried to be a candidate, will not accept a candidacy. And since I am on the committee that will pick the slate of candidates, will veto myself in any attempt to make that happen. So I hope you were listening very carefully as I said that. My job always has been to educate, to deliver a message, to awaken, to empower, to activate, direct, if you will, and that's what I'm good at, and that's what I will continue to do. And the only reason I bring that up is there's always somebody putting forth my name for elected office in all different levels, and I am not interested. So I felt that in the beginning that must be clearly understood. Besides, there are many, many people out there who do a much better job than I ever could, and that's the truth. Now also, <clears throat> within the last few months, I have informed all of you that the militia is going to be attacked, demonized, in every way possible that you can imagine. And that's happening. This appeared in the Boston Globe, I believe. The, yes, Boston Globe. On January the 6th, it's an editorial. And uh, I'm going to read it to you. I want you to listen very carefully to the links which these lying, scum-sucking pigs called journalists will go. They're not journalists, don't even know the meaning of the word journalism. Have never been objective in their life, probably have never looked up that word in the dictionary, don't understand objective. They do understand agenda, however, they understand socialism, they understand that lies to them are truths, or at least they've managed to fool themselves and their editors that that's the case. When you hear this editorial, I think it's going to make you livid with anger. And while I don't have the telephone number of the Boston Globe, this uh, editorial was written by one Chip Burlett. Spelled C-H-I-P. Write this down, folks, because I'm going to ask that you begin writing the Boston Globe. And if you just put editor Boston Globe and send a copy to Chip Burlett in, a, in another envelope. <clears throat> oh, here it is. 
Marjorie Pritchard is either the owner or the uh, editor. Marjorie Pritchard. Write this down, folks. Everybody, all across the nation and the world. Write this down, because when I read to you what they're trying to do, you're going to want to respond. Marjorie Pritchard, spelled P-R-I-T-C-H-A-R-D. P-R-I-T-C-H-A-R-D. Marjorie Pritchard. Globe Newspaper Company. Globe Newspaper Company. One, three, five. Mornsey Boulevard, and that's spelled M O R N S S E Y. Mornsey, spelled M O R N S S E Y Boulevard, 135 Mornsey Boulevard, Boston, Massachusetts. Boston, Massachusetts, zero two. One zero seven is the zip. Zero two one zero seven dash two three seven eight. That's zero two one zero seven dash two three seven eight. Once again, Marjorie Pritchard. Pritchard. Care of Globe Newspaper Company. 135 Mornsey, M-O-R-N-S-S-E-Y, Boulevard, Boston, Massachusetts, 02107-2378. The phone number there is 617. Nine two nine two zero 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 six one seven nine two nine two thousand. That's the number. <clears throat> so I think you'll. Uh, <laughs> oh yes, you will be writing when I read you this editorial. It's entitled "Armed and Dangerous" by Chip Burlett. C H I P B E R L E T. And that's such a pansy, little journalistic type, pen type name, you know, like uh, <clears throat> Susie Cutesy, you know, the names they change their names to, to be uh, uh, anchor persons and things like that on television. That's what this sounds like. I don't know if that's really his name or not. It sounds like a pen name. Chip Burlett. <laughs> Many people assume that John C. Salvi III must be unbalanced. After all, what other explanation can there be for a person who allegedly sprays health clinics with bullets, leaving death and destruction? Salvi's other reported actions add to this public assumption. He quotes the biblical book of Revelations. He meets with a Catholic priest and demands to distribute lurid photographs of aborted fetuses charging that the Catholic Church is not doing enough to stop abortion. He confronts his parish on Christmas Eve for failing to live up to his interpretation of the Catholic faith and its obligations. He embraces violence while participating in a movement that calls itself pro-life. The courts will decide if Salvi is competent to stand trial, but each of his actions and statements can be traced to specific theological and political arguments promoted by organizations in the Boston area and nationwide. The photographs of fetuses distributed by Salvi come from Human Life International, a right-wing Catholic anti-abortion group with a chapter in Massachusetts. HLI promotes a highly dogmatic vision of Catholicism that is critical of liberal Catholics around the issues of abortion, sex education, homosexuality, and feminism. 
HLI distributes books with titles such as, quote, The Feminist Takeover, end quote, quote, Ungodly Rage, The Hidden Face of Catholic Feminism, end quote, and, quote, New World Order, The Ancient Plan of Secret Societies, end quote. The last book promotes the long-standing conspiracy theories of ultra-conservative and far-right groups under the umbrella of the little-known Patriots Movement, groups that fear it. New World Order Conspiracy held a meeting in November at Burlington High School. Speakers included John Birch Society stalwart Samuel L. Blumenfeld, Sandra Martinez of Concerned Women for America and leading anti-abortion organizer, Dr. Mildred Jefferson. Both the Birch Society and CWA are active in the anti-abortion movement. Jefferson is in leadership roles in both the National Right to Life Committee and Massachusetts Citizens for Life. Salvi attended at least one meeting of Massachusetts Citizens for Life and met with several of its leaders. Got a little uh, carried away there, folks. While Jefferson spoke, attendees browsed three tables of literature brought by Dan's Gun Shop in Lakeville. One book offered instruction in the use of the Ruger 22 rifle, the weapon allegedly used by Salvi. I didn't know, folks, that anybody needed a book of instructions to operate a 22 caliber rifle owned by most boys across the country. <laughs> they stoop. They really stoop. I continue. The weapon allegedly used by Salvi. Other books contain diagrams on how to build bombs and incendiary devices. One title was Improved Weapons of the American Underground. You could even purchase the book Hunter by neo-Nazi William Pierce of the National Alliance. Hunter is a book about parasitic Jews destroying America and the need for armed civilians to carry out political assassinations to preserve the white race. Leaflets from the National Alliance attacking the New World Order and minority parasites have been appearing in Cambridge, Somerville, and other Boston area communities. One speaker, Ed Brown, runs the Constitutional Defense Militia of New Hampshire. Brown passed out brochures offering firearms training combat leadership, close combat, and intelligence measures. Brown is part of the growing armed militia movement, which is the militant wing of the Patriots movement. Several months ago, Planned Parenthood held a press conference in New York where it released information about a Patriots meeting in Wisconsin where anti-abortion activists and armed militia proponents shared the podium. A key figure in training armed civilian militias was the featured afternoon speaker at the Burlington meeting, Robert K. Spear, is the author of Living Under the New World Order and Surviving Global Slavery. According to Spear, we are living in the end times, predicted in the book of Revelations. True Christians will be asked to make sacrifices to defend their faith and prepare the way for the return of Christ. Spear's plan is the formation of armed Christian communities. The idea, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, the idea, <coughs> the idea <coughs> that we are in the end times is growing in right wing Christian evangelical circles. While predominantly a Protestant phenomenon, there are small groups of dogmatic and uh, charismatic Catholics that also are embracing end times theology. Like Salvi, they point to the book of Revelations. Spear cited Revelations 13 
the prophecy that in the end times Christians will be asked to accept the satanic mark of the beast and reject Christ. These views are hardly marginal in the Christian right. Pat Robertson, a leading figure in the religious right whose Christian coalition is credited with helping elect many Republican congressmen, has been emphasizing end times themes on the TV program 700 Club. <laughs> on the fringes of the anti-abortion movement are groups that argue that it is morally justifiable to kill abortion providers. In recent years, the most militant anti-abortion groups have been influenced by the theology of Christian Reconstructionism or Dominion theology, which argue that true Christians must physically confront secular and sinful society and return it to God. Beware the actual zombies. They mutilate, they torture, they kill. Spine tingling horror, unspeakable shock, and breathless excitement will grip you as you watch living organs ripped from the bodies of voluptuous females as beating hearts and throbbing brains are transplanted to create the actual zombies. Cringe in terror, scream in fright as these dull faced monsters strike blindly at living flesh, and the motion picture screen flows in the blood drenched wake of the Astro Zombie, the beautiful, voluptuous, deadly Mrs. Satana, a woman who would stop at nothing to gain control over the Astro Zombies, whose creed of brutal mutilations and senseless killings as the Astro Zombies go beset and threaten a city with death. Watch it and you die a thousand deaths. The Astro Zombies in color, coming soon to your local theater. Folks, the hour of the time is brought to you by Swiss America Trading. And, uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the hour of the time is brought to you by Swiss America Trading. Paper crunching headquarters for people who don't need paper. You see, that's what we do. Federal Reserve notes <laughs> being recycled into the, into the Limbaugh bin. Those of you who really understand what this is all about are bolstering your economic security with gold and silver and platinum in its various forms. Yes, you too can be an astro zombie and deal in rush money or you can be a real conspiracy theorist freak and own gold and silver coins. <laughs> Whichever you decide, ladies and gentlemen. And I can tell you, it gets kind of tiring going around all day, going like this. And it's uh, infinitely more fun. Oh, did you hear that? That's real money. Listen. Oh, man. Yes, real money. 1-800-289-2646. Get yours today. Don't be late, folks, because if you don't get your real money now, you'll miss out on being called a conspiracy nut, a conspiracy theorist, a right-wing, gun-toting, terrorist, militia, anti-abortion freak, who is a, on top of all of that, homophobe. Up from the coldest and darkest regions of the sea, as old as time itself, comes the most terrifying monster the world has ever seen. The Slithering over the face of the earth came a monster from beyond the stars, inhuman, indestructible. Life on this planet was doomed when it conquered the world. These will be the strangest, most terrifying motion pictures you have ever seen. You will see monsters from a nightmare. The most horrifying creatures that ever made you wake up screaming. Ah! The she creature and it conquered the world.
Those must be conspiracy freakos. It conquered the world? Can't be! Oh, no! Lock them up. Yes, lock up their films. Lock up the producer. Lock up the director. Lock up everybody! Lock up your coins. Everybody get out Federal Reserve notes. We're all going to play Rush for the next 15 minutes. Now, everybody stand, face the television set, and call the president a name. I don't hear you. This Chip Burlett continues, and he says, through predominantly, though, well, it's spelled through, but he means though, though predominantly composed of right-wing Protestants, a similar movement among doctrinaire Catholics has emerged. The trajectory of Philip Lawler from the editorship of the Catholic publication, The Pilot, to the Catholic League for Religious and Civil Rights to Operation Rescue is one example of this drift toward militancy. Last spring, Salvi joined 300 anti-abortion demonstrators outside the Planned Parenthood Clinic in Brookline, where pamphlets were circulated citing Operation Rescue estimates that 18,000 abortions were performed annually at the facility. There is no evidence that Salvi attended the Patriots meeting in Burlington, or that the rhetoric or ideas of any of the groups or individuals mentioned directly influenced his actions. The fact remains, however, that there is a growing right-wing social movement that uses theological arguments to encourage direct confrontation of its targets and tolerates discussions of armed resistance. Its adherents scapegoat abortion providers, gays and lesbians, feminists, even environmental activists. Some have called feminists who support abortion rights feminazis and argued that abortion is a genocide worse than that of Hitler. One slogan is, if you really think abortion is murder, then act like it. For some who hear this message, all that's left is to pull the trigger. And that's the end. And it says down here at the bottom, Chip Burlett is an analyst at Political Research Associates. Well, folks, who is Political Research Associates? My, 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 my. Let's see if one of our agents has ferreted that out. And I think that we have. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. Political Research Associates is an arm of the Anti-Defamation League. How about that? How in the world did I know that before I even looked? Yes, I want you all to write. You see, because these scum, and that's exactly what they are, these scum are not in power anymore. They spent the entire article linking Salvi with the militia and with patriots. And they used the terms militia and patriot over and over and over and over again. Talking about white Aryan supremacy and Hunter, the book by neo-Nazi William Pierce of the National Alliance, a book about parasitic Jews destroying America and the need for armed civilians to carry out political assassinations to preserve the white race all through this article, and at the, at the end, they casually mention that there is no evidence that Salvi attended the Patriots meeting, or that the rhetoric or ideas of any of the groups or individuals mentioned directly influenced his actions. This is yellow, scum-sucking pig journalism of the worst kind. This is blatant. Marxist socialist propaganda. And who do you think they were talking about? 
when they say some have called feminists who support abortion rights feminazis. And that's not true. For even old Rush has never called anyone who support the anti-abortion movement feminazis. He has called feminazis feminazis. And he does that because feminazis are feminazis. And it has nothing to do with women who believe that women should have equal pay or that women should have the right to work if they want to or climb to the highest positions of the corporate ladder or anything else. See, Rush is right about some things. And he does tell the truth about some things, and he does address some issues, however, very few. He does a lot of entertaining, and I really like that. Keeps me awake while I'm driving. And, of course, he single-handedly supports the logging industry and the paper industry, tearing up probably 16 tablets of paper during every broadcast. Maybe more. Right to Marjorie Pritchard, P-R-I-T-C-H-A-R-D, Marjorie Pritchard, Carob Globe Newspaper Company, 135, and it's spelled here, M-O-R-N-S-S-E-Y, M-O-R-N-S-S-E-Y, Mornsey Boulevard, Boston, Massachusetts, 02. 107, that's 02107 dash 2378. 02107-2378. And if you got that number on there, you don't have to worry about spelling anything else right. It'll get there. Marjorie Pritchard, Globe Newspaper Company, 135 Morton C. Boulevard, Boston, MA. 02107-2378. I encourage you to write to Marjorie Pritchard. I encourage you also to info Chip Burlett with a separate letter, copy of the letter that you send to Marjorie Pritchard. And uh, don't bother writing directly to Chip. You see, Chip is a little peon. Marjorie owns the paper. <laughs> Get the message. And if you want to call, it's 617-929-2000. 617-929-2000. That's the number. Now, if you want to send email, send it to ombud, O-M-B-U-D, O-M-B-U-D, at globe.com. Ombud at globe.com. And it might be a good idea also to write to or call Helen Kennedy at the Boston Herald. Helen Kennedy at the Boston Herald. And tell her what you think of this rat piece run in her competition and see if she can't do something about it in an article in her paper. Helen Kennedy, Boston Herald, 617-426-3000. Six one seven four two six three thousand. How about that? Isn't this amazing? Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know how any newspaper or anybody who calls himself a newspaper or journalist or anchor man or commentator can survive in this world publishing. Crap, spelled C-R-A-P, crap, like that. Blatant lies intended with no misinterpretation whatsoever, intended to deceive and manipulate people and to label those who call themselves patriots and who are loyal to the ideals and principles upon which this country was based and the Constitution for the United States of America, to label them as wacko, 
right-wing, homophobe, conspiracy, freak, gun-toting terrorists and more. And to label the militia a long tradition in this nation that has kept us free for many, many years and militiamen have fought many wars for the states and for the nation. To label them as some kind of dangerous armed bands of bandits who will slit your throat at midnight. And I guess liberals probably believe this is true. Socialism loves this kind of thing. They thrive on it. For when confronted with this kind of enemy, they have an excuse to build more powerful, more oppressive governments to swell the ranks of the police state in order to quell the threat to their one life, low life, no afterlife, little bodies, because they are godless pukes. Let's open the phones and see what you think about that. 602-337-2524 is the number. 602 Three three seven two five two four. They make a mistake when they get me all riled up because tomorrow night you're going to hear all about the ADL. <laughs> How about that? Good evening. You're on the air. Hey, Phil. How come you play so much music? Give us more information. What information would you like? Just along the lines that you're doing it. How much music have we played? Have you been timing the music on this program? Oh, no, I don't time the music, but sometimes you you just, just rattle along with that music. What is it about the music you don't like? Oh, well, nothing in particular, but if I wanted to listen to music, I'd switch it to a music station. Well, you know what my advice is. What? Switch over. Good night. You see, folks, I don't give a rat's butt. Who you listen to or what you listen to. This is my show. The music is for people who like music and who order these tapes. Because the music always has a message on my program. And you would be amazed at how many young people that music has hooked into becoming patriots. Oh, you have few brains and even fewer thoughts. Never even, never even explored those possibilities, have you? And you talk about wasting our time with music. Here we are on an important subject, and you called up to complain about the music. And wasted a good portion of this hour. Good evening, you're on the air. Good evening, Bill. Um, I know most of the facts that you present, um, you claim to have uh, proof about, but something you said on Thursday, December 29th, has been trouble on me. Uh, you made a statement, and I'm quoting it now, that you don't know if aliens exist, but you guarantee they mean us no harm. Can you no, explain that? That's not what I said. I'm quoting you. I have you on tape. I said, if they exist, they mean us no harm. Well, when the that? United States government says that they represent no threat to the national security, they're telling the truth. Because they either don't exist, or they represent no threat. I suppose they do exist. Can you prove they do? No, but I'm not saying there's no harm to us. You are. Can you prove that they're any harm to us? No, but you're saying they're not. Can you prove that they're not? If you can't prove that they exist, and there's no proof upon the face of this earth that they exist, even the conversation whether or not they're harmful to us is a moot, stupid point. <laughs> like you, fool. Go to sleep. Oh, there you are, folks. Another socialist who cannot deal with facts. Most of them can't. See, this guy wants to believe in aliens so bad that if they don't exist, he will invent them. He'll even invent words out of my mouth. Good evening. You're on the air. Hi. I'd like to ask Bill about... Turn your radio off or I'm going to turn you off. Sorry. Hi. Um, I was wondering, do you know when and what the name of Aaron Russo's show on television is going to be? 
I don't know when, but I think it's going to be called Aaron Russo is Mad as Hell. Okay, do you know what? That, that, could, that could be changed. That could be wrong, but that's what I've heard so far. Okay. Um, do you have a, a phone number for people to call for the Constitution Party, a regular phone number? Uh, yes, you can call the, uh, the old phone number, which is uh, the one that uh, came... California one? Pardon? The California number? Yes, until we get the uh, new lines in here, and then there will be a number here. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. 602-337-2524. Is the number. And, uh, ladies and gentlemen, beginning tomorrow night, because of what you heard tonight, you're going to hear more about the ADL. Good evening, you're on the air. Yeah, Bill. Hey, I owe you an apology, man. Uh, I called up one night and uh, kind of blasted you and said that uh, you didn't understand the teachings of uh, Jesus, and uh, I guess it was really me who didn't understand, so. I wanted to apologize because, uh, you know, you were saying that, that there was no rapture, and I was afraid that, you know, it might, uh, you know, take away uh, people's hope, you know. But now that I've read uh, Matthew 24 more carefully and some of the other things, uh, I think you're right. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to apologize. Well, thank you. Um, it's, it, the apology wasn't necessary. What? What, what I think I owed it to you because I, I slammed you in public, so I was wrong, so I'll apologize to you in public. How's that? Well, thank you. Okay. Thank you very I much. Bless you. Bless you, too. Okay, bye. Well, folks, you don't have to apologize to me. My reward is knowing that you went and looked and learned and got on track. And it's not even necessary that you agree with everything that I say. I'm trying to wake you up. And sometimes... I make mistakes, just like everybody else. But so far, I've been more right than most. And that's pretty good. Good evening, you're on the air. Hey, Bill, this is John calling from Norristown. Hello, John. Hi, that guy Chip Bartlett was also quoted in the Philadelphia Daily News. I sent you a copy of that article. Uh, also, I've been told by one of the men that works at the Montgomery County Observer newspaper that Bartlett's affiliated with one of the gay and lesbian task forces. Uh, it's alleged that his job is to infiltrate patriot organizations and spread this information about that. Well, he's doing a pretty good uh, job of, uh, of pretending that everybody is so stupid that they can't see through his transparent bullshit. But, uh, <laughs> you know, when it's that transparent, you got to wonder if anybody was to read that article and really pick up on his message versus the truth. Uh, we're in big trouble. Based on what I learned on your program, I sent him copies of the United States Code, uh, Title V, regarding uh, unorganized militias, and also copies out of our uh, Pennsylvania State Constitution. You mean Title X? Title X. Yeah. And also... Uh, you know, from our state constitution saying that militias are lawful and permissible. Not only that, but I'll bet you, I'll bet you that he, Mr. Chip Burlett, if he's between the ages of 17 and 45, is a member of a militia and he doesn't even know it. Well, that's coming out on our talk radio here, mainstream talk radio. People call up and uh, make that statement. Well, it's true. I realize that. Thank you for your uh, information, Bill. Thank you for calling. Bye-bye. 602-337-2524. Yeah, folks, I hope everybody out there listening writes this little puke, scum, socialist, hog bleep. And, uh, not him. Write Marjorie about him and info him with another separate letter. And call, too. This guy... This guy, if anybody in, 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 in the world ever deserved to be tarred and feathered and run out of town on a rail, he is it. Good evening. You're on the air. Hi. Uh, for a reference to that article, can you uh, give the uh, date and the page that was on? It was January the 6th. I don't know which page uh, because the article's faxed to me while I was gone. Is that an editorial? It's an editorial, yes. So it'll probably be on the editorial page. Okay. Of the Boston Globe. Okay. And would you please read uh, uh, Tuesday, uh, the Wall Street Journal, they had a recantation uh, 
by a researcher on the op-ed page uh-huh. uh, on the Randy Weaver, on that fantasy that uh, Mr. Free put out last Friday. Yeah. About Randy, did you probably read that, about the uh, reinstatement of uh, a couple of those FBI hoods up there? Uh, you might want to read it. It's, it's very good. Yeah. And, you know, it, it, its basis is in the... Uh, this man's article in today's Wall Street Journal is with regard to the facts of the trial, not what Mr. Free says. Uh-huh. I was deeply immersed in a, a very, in what I consider to be an extremely important meeting in Kansas My, City. So if somebody would uh, please fax me that information, I'll be happy to read it on the air. You know, I get back from this next little short trip. Mr. Free from the FBI uh, gave uh, the final uh, uh, result, you know, his final results in a statement about the uh, Randy Weaver case and the people, his people involved in that. Uh-huh. And, you know, they're not going to, the federal government isn't going to prosecute Juan Horiuchi or the head guy that was up there, unfortunately. Now it's up to the state of Idaho. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for calling. Well, folks, I think that just about does it. So, uh, <laughs> this is dedicated to all the little social illusionists out there who believe in the yellow journalistic techniques of Mr. Chip Burlett and the editorial policy of the Boston Globe. This is for you, and it's truly, truly what you are and what you represent, unfortunately, for the nation. Good night, folks, and God bless you all. Beware the Astros Army. They mutilate, they torture, they kill. Spring tingling horror, unspeakable shock, and breathless excitement will grip you as you watch living organs ripped from the bodies of voluptuous females as beating hearts and throbbing brains are transplanted to create the Astro Zombies. Cringe in terror, scream in fright as these skull faced monsters strike blindly at living flesh and the motion picture screen flows in the blood drenched wake of the Astro Zombies. Voluptuous, <laughs> deadly, vicious Satana, a woman who would stop at nothing to gain control over the Astro Zombies, whose creed was kill, kill, kill. John Carradine as the deranged scientist, Wendell Corey as the doctor who opposes him, Matt Witt in this bloody, sadistic, terror-filled, suspense latent horror film of brutal mutilations and senseless killings as the Astro Zombies go berserk and threaten a city with death. Watch it as you die a thousand deaths. The Astro Zombies in color, coming soon to your local theater. Out from the coldest and darkest regions of the sea, as old as time itself, comes the most terrifying monster the world has ever seen. The what is it, this head that lives without a body? A monstrous thing that enslaves every woman, destroys every man who stares into its eyes. A thing that couldn't die. Ladies and gentlemen, here is an important message from Jack H. Harris, producer of 4D Man. Imagine a check for $1 million being made out to you. In my new film, you will see 4D Man perform feats never seen on the screen before. <laughs> Please, we're doing all we can for you. We're trying to bring you back down to normal size. You do think I'm a freak, don't you? But you know... To me, you're the freak, the one who's different. I'm not growing, you're shrinking! <laughs> he started as a normal human being, but now each day he doubles in size. Where will it stop? The amazing, colossal man. Colonel, he's been reported in Las Vegas. Impossible. How can he walk 120 miles in only an hour? Impossible. Not when you're 60 feet tall. The amazing, colossal man. The Mummy. Fear will freeze you when you face it. 
the mummy. Torn from the darkest tomb of the pharaohs, it rises from the quiet dust of centuries to wreak a strange vengeance against mankind. The mummy. It tears steel bars like paper. It snaps men's spines like matchsticks. Walks through bullets like a goat. Bars like paper. It snaps men's spines like...